Hi everyone, it's Shar and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video. I saw Jess from Peace Love Books, so full credit to her, do this video that's like 15 books that define my reading taste. I think that this is such a fun concept and I wanna tell you all about the books that I think define my reading taste. This is not like a what makes a book a five star. If you wanna see that video, I'll have it linked somewhere in the video or in the description, but this is more of books that I think are the very definition of like what I enjoy when I read. These are not necessarily all time favorites, but some of them are. So without further ado, let me tell you about the 15 books that define my reading taste. This first is a book that I loved as a like preteen and teen, and that is the Percy Jackson book. I'm gonna just have this be the entire series. And I think that this defines my reading taste because it has all of it the mythological elements, the adventure, the action, the little romantic subplot. And whenever I think about this series, I just think about how much it means to me and how much I loved it throughout my life. Like even now in adulthood, I still really love the Percy Jackson series. And this series is one of many that made me want to pursue a degree in writing and become a publisher. My life took a different path, but I still credit this book with so much and just like how much it helped me throughout my life. I think that many of the elements in this book shaped what it is that I enjoy when I read, especially if I'm reading fantasy. And a little fun fact for you, I read Percy Jackson as a child because I wanted to read mythology fan fiction. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I had learned about mythology in the ninth grade. And then I was like, literally on Google, like, what books can I read if I like Greek mythology? And they're like, Percy Jackson. And I love this series so much. I think it's definitely one of the cornerstones of my reading taste. The second book that I think really defines my reading taste is Radiance by Grace Draven. This is one of my all time favorite romances following this couple who are in this kind of marriage or political alliance between their people. They don't like each other, but they eventually fall in love. And I just think this is so sweet. I absolutely love the friends to lovers dynamics. And when it comes to the defining my reading taste portion, friends to lover, fantasy romance, very cozy, very gentle romance between the characters, some spicy scenes and some political intrigue. So this definitely is one of my absolute favorites and definitely I think defines what it is that I enjoy in books. Perhaps controversially, because I know that this is not everyone's favorite Allie Hazelwood, but this is personally my favorite Allie Hazelwood, and that is Love on the Brain. This one was so much fun for me. We're following two people who work in STEM. I believe they work in NASA. They were acquainted and don't really have a great relationship because she thinks that he thinks that she's very ugly and there's this whole miscommunication because he believes that she is married because the last time that he saw her, she was engaged. I love this for like the feminist aspects of it, but their relationship as well is so much fun like it's riddled with tension but a playful tension and i think that defines my reading taste and that i don't like things that are very very high angst i tend to enjoy something a little bit on the fluffier and cozier side and i can't spoil anything but this book goes to very chaotic places and as someone who hates the third act breakup i think having it go somewhere so chaotic is what brought it up to a five star read for me a good balance of sweet romance and steam but definitely the definition of a strong, intelligent female main character, which is for sure one of the cornerstones of what I look for when I read. Dipping my toes now into a little bit more of the scarier side of books, I have and the Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigage. This is such a beautiful, like gothic, little almost fairy tale, but it's scary. So we're following two girls who have to go live with their aunt due to some very tragic circumstances that lead them having to run away from their home. They go live with their aunt, but things very quickly go wrong. And the trees outside the forest is getting closer and closer and closer to the property line. And they're trying to figure out exactly what goes wrong. This book is absolutely uh, riddled with tragedy and sadness so just like be aware of that but it has so many of these moments throughout but there are poems and excerpts and I tab the absolute bejesus out of this they have like mixed media format with these little notes and if you pay attention to which words are bolded throughout the story it creates a poem and gives you a hint as to what is going on to me this book reminds me of Pan's Labyrinth a little bit not in a lot of ways but just like that 
what is reality kind of element, like what's real and what is going on in these girls' heads outside of that. It is very bizarre. It is such a strange little book, but it's beautifully written. It's gothic. It has fairy tale esque elements. It has a lot of emotional complexity throughout the story. And if you've been here for a while, you know, those are some of the elements that make a five star read for me. And so I think this book defines my reading taste when it comes to gothic fiction. And then I have Act Your Age Eve Brown with these beautiful blue sprayed edges. I made those myself. Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert is a story of a woman named Eve who I found a lot of personal connection with. She's someone who kind of goes from hobby to hobby, doesn't really stick to one thing and people kind of think of her as being like flighty or unable to commit and that's really not her at all. She's just like going through life trying to find herself and her passion and that changes. And as someone who is multi-passionate and picks up a lot of hobbies, I found myself relating to Eve, but Eve ends up applying for this position at this cozy little bed and breakfast in the English countryside to be the chef. She does not get it and when she's outside, she runs over the uh, man who owns the B&B with her car and he's injured and she is forced to help him uh, throughout his recovery and help him run the bed and breakfast and this is their love story. This one again has all of the things that I love in romance being a soft romance with some playful banter, very steamy scenes and just they're so cute. I think an element of this that defines my reading taste is the exploration of the character's identity herself and the way that she moves through life discovering things about herself that she had always known but never had a label for and I really enjoy character exploration and character development in that way where the character is finding out something about themselves that they were not previously aware of or did not previously have a name for so yes actor Eve, Eve Brown one of my all-time favorite romances and I'm so happy with how these edges turned out <laughs> like it matches so perfectly and so we bring ourselves to romanticy if I'm going to read fantasy, something my fantasy needs to have, not always, but what I'm looking for is some romantic elements in here. So of course I have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. This is the Fairy Loot Edition. And in Emily Wilde's, why am I holding it over here when previously it had been over here? We'll put this here. In Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, we're following a woman named Emily who is a professor. She is a researcher of folklore and fairy tales, but in this world, fairies are actually real and she's actively researching their little communities as they exist around the world. She ends up in this small town of what I want to say is supposed to be like a mythological made up version of Norway. Uh, the townspeople don't really like her. Emily is really awkward and has difficulty kind of understanding social cues. She thinks she's being perfectly polite, which she is, but the townspeople are taking the things that she's doing and saying and just how abrupt she can be the wrong way. She has this academic rival who happens to think that they're best friends named Wendell Bambleby, and he barges in on her mission. He's like, my gosh, this fucking town is cold. And it's their adventures. Much like And the Trees Crept In, there is a lot of fairy tale elements throughout here, a quest, an adventure, beautiful writing, dreamy kind of scenes, and of course, the romance throughout here, which I really love. We have a, I was gonna say soft, he's soft for her which is something that I love in my romances. So yes, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies is one of my absolute favorites and definitely defines my reading taste when it comes to romanticism. This is the only Emily Henry that you will see in any of my videos because it's the only one that I've loved, although I have strong hopes for funny story, funny story. This is People We Meet on Vacation, which I know some people love, some people hate. I personally really love this story and here is why. Friends to Lover. Pining. So in this story, we're following two people who were best friends and went on vacation every single year, but something happened and they stopped speaking. And it's been years since they've been together and our main female character, what's her name, Pip? Poppy. Poppy is struggling and she really misses a time in her life when she was happy and she really misses her former best friend, Alex. So she reaches out to Alex and she says, let's go on one more vacation together. I want to work things out. He agrees and you're following their perspective in the current moment on this vacation they're on, but also learning about how they became friends in the past and seeing scenes for all of their previous vacations. What I really enjoy in this is the story building of their lives throughout. 
it very much felt like they were real people and we were just reading their story of how they became friends poppy's feeling of like listlessness is that the right word i hope so <laughs> and just a feeling that she's not where she's supposed to be her life isn't turning out the way that she wants it's something that i find deeply relatable and i just really love the whole friends to lovers element in here and this really strong character development of both of these characters and strong characters is something that i look for in a lot of my reading very very well developed stories and typically i don't like the past and present timeline but I really think that Emily Henry masterfully did this and I really enjoyed that and I think that this is what I think of when I think of friends to lover subconsciously I may be comparing every friends to lovers to this if you're not new here how could I possibly do this video and not mention a monster romance there are so many books that I could pick from but ultimately I'm settling on I married a minotaur by Regine Abel first and foremost I love this entire series mostly there are two books that I'm like mm, no that wasn't for me but I love this series so much it's a series following people from different planets who are matched for the betterment or benefit of one of the groups on that planet as well as giving the advantage to the person that is being matched and getting them out of circumstances that's very vague but in I Married a Minotaur we are following Brianna who is someone who was wrongfully convicted of something right she was on a ship where they were smuggling something and she <laughs> ends up taking the fall for it even though her role in that was absolutely minimal this petty ass judge just wanted revenge on her because of who her ex-boyfriend was so she ends up getting sentenced to life on this prison pa planet where essentially she would die but the prime mating agency comes in and says actually we have your perfect match you don't deserve to go to this planet there's this loophole here you're going to marry this minotaur man on this planet and the minotaur people or people are trying to help cultivate peace this leader of the minotaur people really wants to create a new future for his people and you have the skill set to help them do that so we're going to let you two get married and you can escape your prison sentence after six months with this man you can get divorced and you're all cleared to go so she agrees to it and she ends up meeting the minotaur on this cover here it's a story of their marriage and the way that they're trying to bring the minotaur our people into a new era of peace and find outlets for them in the ways that they need to express aggression because of their like healing abilities it's very much linked to their ability to fight and they need to have an outlet to fight in order to be in optimal health i really love this one because it's a good balance of the relationship between the two characters and of course we have the classic soft gentle romance these two are patiently getting to know one another it's not instant love but they're very much just like I could love you it's a very gentle exploration of the relationship but the relationship is not the only thing that's happening in this book the fantasy elements and the sci-fi elements in here and the political intrigue in here are also really interesting because we have exploration of the minotaur people and how they function on this world their long history the political intrigue elements of like how are we going to do this as well as the other species that they share the planet with and the tension between them because of the past of the minotaurs i could go on and on and on but this defies my reading taste because it has that really well balanced thing that I look for typically in romanticy but apparently also in monster romance and sci-fi romance which is a balance of things happening in the plot a soft and gentle romance between the characters political intrigue in this case and just having a Thing that's moving the story forward i think that's done very well in this series and in this book all right at this point i'll start repeating myself because the things that i look for are the things that show up i think that an enchantment of raven by margaret rogerson is a book that defines my reading taste in this story we're following a woman who is like a portrait artist and she's very very well known for the portraits that she makes one day she gets a very high profile fake client who's the prince of the winter courts i want to say winter fall one of those courts and she paints his portrait but she does something that she does not realize is a fake social faux pas and that she draws his portrait and paints his portrait with emotion 
and they do not have human emotion. So he takes it to his court where it's unveiled. He realizes what she's done, which is a massive insult, comes back and snatches her up. And now we're on an adventure story of them throughout the forest and all of the other things that are going on with the other fake courts against this couple. I really love this because of the fairy tale aspects. Fae are a little bit truer to how Fae are typically described as being kind of ruthless and vindictive and manipulative. And that is definitely what is going on throughout here. And like many of the other stories, it shares the parallels of just having a lot more going on than the romance, but still having a romantic subplot. And I really enjoy the political maneuvering that happens throughout this. Plus it's beautifully written and I love good writing. An Earl to Remember by Stacey Reed, because yes, I'm in my historical romance era once again. In this story, we are following a woman who is a chef. She ends up getting her big break working at this private like boat party on some Earl's yacht where she is catering and it's going really, really well, but due to a misunderstanding, the Earl comes to believe that she's there to have a threesome with him. And she's like, absolutely not. But they get caught by his mistress and she is unfairly fired. Then the Earl and his mistress get into a fight. He falls off the ship, gets amnesia. Long story short, this is an overboard retelling. And again, strong female character, really funny story, very gentle romance, great banter, lots of playfulness. And of course we have caretaking and beautiful little like family dynamics. And I loved all of that. It's the very definition of a soft romance to me. So of course it defines my reading taste. Stars Collide by Rachel Lacey is a sapphic romance between two musicians, one who is on a stadium world tour and the other one who is getting her big break on this world tour. She is an up and coming artist. This one is all about their relationship and how they develop their romance throughout this tour. But what I really love about this as well, as I've mentioned before, is the character development in here as well as the exploration of identity and the later in life coming out for our main female character whose name Eden. Another book that falls into that category of this is just kind of weird but I'm here for it. A House at the Bottom of the Lake by Josh Mallerman which is the story of two teenagers going on their first day on a lake for their little kayak date and they find a house at the bottom of the lake and they become obsessed with this house but also start to fall in love with each other. The elements of this that I love are the dreamy nature of it, the eeriness that's underneath. It's not like overtly scary but there are definitely scary things going on beneath that. You never quite know what's happening. It's a short little book but the weird horror kind of dreamy element of it is what I love. Would I be me if I didn't talk about ghosts? I fucking love a ghost story. And the epitome of ghost story to me is The Carol Haunt by Darcy Coates. In this story, we're following a woman who is a tour guide for a very notoriously haunted house. And she gets approached by a man who is the head of a paranormal investigation team. She agrees to help him out because he wants to investigate the house and they all come together and they're trapped in the house because the house is on this cliffside and there's a storm. We have an isolated element. We have a paranormal investigation. We have very aggressive ghosts. We have, again, that dreamy kind of sequence where you kind of feel like you're falling into the story, but everything's kind of blurred and you just don't really know what's going on. I really love all those elements of the story. And when I think about what I love in a ghost story, I think of the carol haunt. We have Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I know this is not very well loved by a lot of people, but this is everything that I look for in a story. In this story, we're following a young girl who is kind of orphaned and I believe she is mute. And she gets this letter from a man claiming to be her uncle saying, you must come to Gallant. She's never heard of this man, but she gets there and not everything is what it seems. We have some elements in here of some fairy tale ass stories. Listen, if you heard about the fantasies from anything else, you know this is what I love. It's gothic and it's a very similar line to And the Trees Crept In. I really love this, even though people think that it reads a little bit too young. I don't mind that it reads young. I was here for the fairy tale elements and this truly defined my reading taste because everything about this book was set up for me to love it. And 
Finally, we have these Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall. This is a sapphic story following this woman who lives with her mother and her stepfather, and they get a letter saying that her grandfather has died. So they go up to the estate, this massive manor, because her mother was hella fucking rich. They go there, and she finds out that the our main character, the daughter, is going to inherit everything, but she has to stay on the land for one year. And the story unravels from there because nothing is what it seems. It gets very gothic. It gets very fairy tale esque It gets very dreamy, very strong characters in here. Lots of like subtle humor, but I just love this book and I love where it ended up going. So you can see a common theme here through all of these stories and the weirdness that I typically enjoy when I'm reading a fantasy or I'm reading a horror I love something with a little bit of a slower pace and a stronger atmosphere and something that you're not quite sure what's going on. So that is it. Those are the 15 books that define my reading taste. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I would love to hear in the comments below what your favorite book of all time is, or if you've read any of these books. Don't forget to like this video if you did like it. Please subscribe before you head on out. I will have other videos linked for you if you want to stick around, and I'm going to see you in my next video. And Thank you to Jess and full credit to her again for the concept. I will have Jess's video linked down below and I'm going to see you next time. Bye.